And a good morning, Birds fans. I know that's a stretch. Here on Birds 365, you got Mac and Mac, McMullen and McDonald, and we'll break down last night's game. Breakdown. That's a good word to use today with compared to the Eagles defense for the last two minutes of that game. Uh, we will do just that for you here on Birds 365 and the Eagles loss to the Seattle Seahawks. That's a bitter pill to swallow, Johnny Mac. Uh, losing to the 49ers is one thing. They're a very good team. Um, I think over since the Eagles lost them, we found out they're an even better team than they we may have thought before they came in here. Get beat by the Cowboys in their house. They won 14 straight games in Dallas. They, they were an underdog in both games. They were not an underdog last night. They were playing a team that had lost four straight games, and they just uh, choked it away at the end of the game. How bitter a pill is it? Yeah, it's a bad loss. I mean, I, I think you stated it pretty correctly. I, I mean, San Francisco's by and far, you know, people talk about Super Bowl contenders. Who is a Super Bowl contender other than the 49ers right now? So I heard a bunch of people say the Eagles aren't Super Bowl contenders. Well, maybe they aren't. So they got to get lucky if they they match up with San Francisco, maybe an injury, maybe something else. But who is? Maybe, mm-hmm. I guess you could argue Baltimore. Kansas City hasn't looked good. Dallas gets destroyed in Buffalo, on and on and on. So, you know, somebody's got to be in the mix to be in the final four or or however you want to whittle it down. But uh, it, it's a bad loss. You lose to a backup quarterback for a team that's struggling. And he pretty much handled your business. It was ugly. I thought they were going to get an ugly win. Um, and, yeah, I, I mean – Number one, Bradbury's not having a good year. Number two, um, I, I think the defense played well enough to win. I got more issues with the offense today. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, oh, the big change from Sean Desai to Matt Patricia. Matt Patricia's brilliance was, you know, game planning against a bad offense. That 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 was. I I explained to people the improvements baked in. It was going to improve from where it was against San Francisco and Dallas. Um, Two really good offenses, Dallas at home, San Francisco, anywhere. Um, So that part of it, I'm I'm not going to go overboard on how how much improvement there was, but there was improvement, natural improvement, baked-in improvement. The offense was terrible, and the passing game specifically was terrible. And the quarterback, let's be honest, was terrible. Hopefully, hopefully, it has to do with the illness he was fighting through, and he was sick. But I'm not sugarcoating it. He was terrible, Jody. All the way up to the final throw, what do you need? 15 or so yards to at least give Jake Elliott a shot. There's no guarantee in that. You know, it's raining again, another rain game. What is that, the 75th rain game this year? You expect that in Seattle, but no guarantee Jake Elliott's going to bomb a long field goal like he usually does, but you at least want to give him an opportunity. And why are you forcing the football down the field? Same thing with Quez Watkins. Why are you forcing the football? You're moving, you're moving, you're moving, and you're forcing the football down the field of Quez Watkins, who it was a bad throw. He, he shouldn't have thrown it, but he's not going to fight for it. He's not going to play defensive back. He's not going to break it up, help you. Just the decision-making is really bad at this point from the quarterback. And I don't know why the regression is. Now, typically it's not this bad. Um, so I hope it has to do with the illness and fighting through it. And that's very difficult. And we give him credit for doing that. But just from a pure football standpoint, he was not good, Jody. He was not good. Johnny Mac, after the game's over and done with, uh, you can at a later date watch the All-22, which gives you a better view of what was out there, that what uh, could have been different choices made. Even on the broadcast last night, they had a couple of replays that showed guys on the, you and I have talked about this too many times over the life of Birds 365. Oh, he was wide open on the other side. How did he miss him? Well, he's not even looking there. So, yeah, it's at time, from time to time, there are going to be guys wide open. There were guys open underneath the guys that he was throwing the football to. So he's looking down that side of the field. 
and he can see that one is more open than the other, and he tries to force it to the guy that was more covered. That's that's inexcusable. If you've got a specific play on and a guy just happens to be the defense reads it right, he's looking only one way, and they leave a guy open on the backside, way out of his field of vision, all right, sometimes you're going to miss those. But when you miss a guy who is right in your field of vision and you try and force the ball to a covered player down the field, that's on Jalen. He just had – he had a bad game last night, and you're right. Don't know whether to blame it on his illness. Here's here's what worried me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, him running the football looked like he's perfectly fine. Yeah, that yeah. Was, he had a good day running it. Um, one game he's had maybe all year, certainly yeah. the first month of the season. So if he was feeling the effects of the illness, I don't know that he makes the plays that he makes with his legs. So I yeah. Guess- we can cut him the slack that we want to cut him because there was the report that he had to fly by himself and he might not even play. He ended up taking every single snap. I don't know how much slack we can cut him. I think we just got to call this one for what it is. <clears throat> yeah, really bad was, game by the starting quarterback. He was very effective running the ball. And if he wanted some happiness, he tied Cam Newton's single season record for rushing touchdowns for a quarterback. So he's got three games to go. He's probably going to set that record. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was the best he's looked all season, I think, running the football. Um, and, yeah, yeah, it's tough to uh, couple those two things and say, oh, he's fine for one, but he's not fine for the other. So I'm with you. That's why I said it. That's why, I mean, that's my biggest issue. Right now, the quarterback has regressed um, pretty 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 badly over the past month and um i can't explain it because he's played well at times this season you have some issues i mean more turnovers than he had last year a lot of those are you know we talk about the randomness of turnovers if you break down and watch you know when he's when it's a muffed um uh, a, a fumble at the mesh point you know who it could be the running backs fault but it's always going to put be put on the quarterback's record the sheet that's how they do it um you know did somebody tip a ball did somebody you know versus the jets interception which was a really bad interception and that's completely on the quarterback um so you have to look at the turnovers each individually and the two yesterday were a guy forcing the ball it reminds me i brought up patrick mahomes and when people tried to pay, play when Tyreek Hill was still there and people said, all right, we're sick of getting beat over the top. And they just put their safeties in the, in the parking lot and they were going to force Kansas city to move meticulously down the field. And if you remember, he struggled early that season because he's so used to the big plays struggled for him. So used to the big plays and he wanted them and he wanted the big chunks and he was forcing the football instead of taking what was there eventually corrected it um the eagles need some kind of adjustment because teams are evolving how they play them they're trying to limit those big plays that's what the eagles do on defense not successfully as sean desai can tell you but uh that's their goal well teams are doing that to the eagles they're trying to limit these big plays and they're trying to go after them anyway and you got as you mentioned in a couple cases Wide open receivers underneath in the progression. That's mm-hmm. the key. I don't give a crap if somebody on the other side of the field you think is wide open. In the progression, guys are open, and he's not taking layups. And he's taking Step Curry 40-footers, and he's not Step Curry right now. No, he is not. Uh, so, yeah, the Eagles certainly lost this one because of uh, offensive ineptitude in the second half. You're cutting the defense a little more slack than I am. Uh, I, I'm not going to go there. You, you hold them to three points in the second half, and you let Drew Locke go up and down the field for 17 points, specifically the final touchdown, which is just death, 92 yards in under two minutes. Drew Locke? What, 92 what they have yards one time in, out. I think they had one time out. They, they didn't even need the one. I think they got the ball with 142, 152, something 52, like that. 52, yeah. Yeah. And, and they didn't even need the 152. Yeah. It wasn't good. I'm not saying that. That's that's a bad job. 
you know, I, I see it in the NFL every week. Teams play good defense and then they blow it at the end. And, and yeah, I, I kind of lean towards, because it seems to me in more cases than not, it, it, it's, it's this weird disconnect. I, I think offensive coaches get too uh, conservative in the lead in this era. Um, now I'm not saying the Eagles were just bad. I'm saying in general, um, they, they tend to get too conservative and leave the door open. And all of a sudden, you know, when you're one-on-one and you're, you're throwing it up, everybody's got such great receivers, um, you know, and it becomes a one-on-one battle and the receiver usually has better ball skills than the, um, you see it every week where somebody comes down with a great 50, 50 ball. T Higgins did it uh, this week in Cincinnati. So um, it happens to a bunch of teams. I think defensive coaches got to get together and think about their process. And I think offensive coaches need to need to realize that, um, you know, nothing is safe in this league, even against, well, think about it. Jake Browning, Drew Locke, even these guys are making throws. Um, it is what it is, but I thought the defense played well enough to win. Is here's, what I'm trying to here's say. Here's why I'm not going to go there. Their tackling stunk. Oh last well, night. Yeah, yeah, stunk. That's kind of a big deal in playing defense in the National Football League, John. You have to be able to tackle, and no, their no, tackling no, was no, putrid no. last night. And Sidney Brown was at the top of the list. Yeah. He got more time. They played a lot of big nickel last night. He was on the field a lot, either as the safety or the safety slash linebacker. And you just got to bring the guy to the ground. We talk about the fact that he's more athletic and he's faster and Eagles don't have speed. Athletic speed is great until you need to pull a guy down to the ground. And Sidney Brown missed a couple huge tackles last night. That's part of the defense. Now, that's on Sidney Brown, not on Matt Patricia specifically, but he was the one who chose to go as big nickel as often as he did, which left it open for Walker to get some pretty significant runs last night. Yeah, I think that was a major contributing factor to the loss last night. They didn't tackle work. Yeah, well, I mean, I could go in telling you that uh, Sidney Brown can't tackle, uh, uh, Kaylee Ringo can't tackle, Eli Kaylee Ricks Ringo played tackle. well last night. Yeah, he made one good tackle. I thought he did play well. I think uh, I think both uh, Ringo and Ricks played well in coverage. But if you look at them, if you look at the uh, um, Kenneth Walker touchdown run, I mean, Eli got pushed in the Puget Sound. I mean, it was ridiculous. Uh, 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 the, these guys can't tackle. I mean, you're a college football fan. They don't tackle. And so you gotta you gotta get through those startup costs, and you gotta. That's why I talked about playing Sidney Brown earlier. Who knows where he'd be? I mean, I always use that term. That's baked into it with me with young defensive backs. They can't tackle, so they got to learn to tackle at this level. And how do you learn to tackle in practice when you can't have pads on the most of the time? You have no contact. How do you learn to tackle? You learn to tackle on the field, right? In in real life environment. Yep. Um, so that's why I'm not, I'm not, you're right. You're hundred percent right. The tackling was awful from the young defensive backs with the exception of Ringo, the one nice tackle. Um, but that's, I know that's coming. So if you're throwing out young, de- and this is anywhere, this is anywhere in the NFL, you're throwing out young defensive backs and you're expecting them to be good tacklers. Not right away. Maybe they get better at it. Um, and you got to hope Sydney gets better at it. No question about it, but he was it. But the thing about the, what I'm so excited about with Sydney Brown, he's in position to make those plays. So if he gets through it, the other guys aren't in position to make those plays. If he gets through it and he learns to tackle and he gets better with it, all of a sudden you got a really good player. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I see the the at least the optimism that it might happen. And the guy who I'm sorry, if you're gonna hang this loss on one guy, it'd probably be Jalen more than anything else. 
but it's James Bradbury. He just got yeah, yeah, yeah. taken to the woodshed last night. Uh, he had a phenomenal year last year, better than Slay. He made all pro. Slay didn't, and I thought he was better over the course of the year. When you add an extra year, when you've reached the big three, you get to that 30 number, you're always on the lookout for, is there going to be a drop-off? Is there a half a step slower? Uh, is he going to be able to retain the level of he's at? And you get nervous when a guy gets to 30. Then there's the falling off the cliff which is what I think is happening with James Bradbury this year. He's just getting beat left, right, and center. And in the biggest of spots last night, I saw his explanation after the game. Well, I was playing at the sticks. If you're playing at the sticks, how do you let a guy get behind you? You're, come on. You, you have to know that that's a possibility. And you've got to have the ability and the speed to adjust to get back and deflect that ball. He got beaten on both of the big gainers, in the, including the touchdown pass that ended up costing the Eagles the game. And John, maybe it was just optimistic thinking on my part coming in. What scared me most about this game coming in was the rookie cornerbacks. I think they did their job. That wasn't the reason they lost, was the fact that I didn't think uh, Jalen Hurts was a given to play. Oh, yeah, he played, didn't play well. Uh, the reasons that I was nervous about the game coming in, actually weren't the reason that they lost. The reason that I thought they could win some givens that Jalen Hurts would be Jalen Hurts if he takes the field, and a guy like Bradbury would step up to try and pick up the slack for his missing brother Slay was absolutely terrible. I, I did pick the Seahawks to win here yesterday, but for very different reasons that they actually won the game. I couldn't have had a worse read on the game the way that it played out. But the Eagles did end up uh, losing it. Not good. All right. McMullen and McDonald hanging with you. We'll continue to break it down. We'll get a helping hand from two good guests. First up would be Andrew DiCecco from InsideBirds.com and podcast. He's going to join us. Glenn Mackle now a little bit later. Andrew DiCecco next here on Birds 365.